Okay, so we just looked at how you can solve a simple two by two system of equations with two unknown variables. And now we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to um, generalize this to a three by three system with three equations and three unknowns. And we're also going to figure out how to keep, um, how to save our work. So let's say that I had this AX equals B and x is my unknown vector I'm trying to solve for. This could be the age of Sally and Bob, for example. And b were some numbers that I was given. Okay, What if those numbers in b changed, or they were different for a different set of people, for a different x vector? I don't want to keep repeating the same procedure over and over to resolve a new system. What I'd like to do is find the inverse of a. So what I can say is that x, um, I can say that x equals, so if ax equals b, then I can say that x equals the inverse of a, a inverse times b. Okay. Now, I haven't told you what this inverse is yet, but the inverse of a is this very, very special matrix such that a inverse times a equals the identity matrix. This equals just a matrix of uh, you know, 1, 0, 0, 1 in the 2 by 2 case. Okay, very special matrix, because anytime I take my identity and multiply it by any vector x, I get x back. Okay, identity is a really, really special matrix. Now, this inverse doesn't exist for all possible matrices A, but let's just assume for now that there is an inverse and it does exist such that if I multiply A inverse times A, I get this thing. Okay, sometimes A inverse won't exist. We'll talk about that later. But what we would really like to be able to do is find, so we want to find A inverse, because if we can find A inverse, then we can solve this equation over and over and over again for lots of different B vectors. So you can give me Let's say that I have this formula, AX equals B, and A is known and B is known, but let's say that every week my boss emails me a new B vector and tells me I need X. So I don't want to keep redoing the same math over and over again. I want to solve what A inverse is and keep it. I want to store it on my computer so that every time my boss emails me a new B vector, I can just multiply A inverse times B and I get my solution X. I solve for my unknown variables. Okay, and we're going to do this in the following way. Uh, so we're, I'm going to introduce a slightly more complicated problem uh, than the one we had before. I want to do this in three variables because I think everything becomes a little bit, um, it takes a little more time, but it also becomes a little bit more clear when you have three variables. Okay, so now instead of just Sally and Bob, we're going to have Sally, John, and Bob. So Sally plus um, John plus Bob equals 60. We're going to have 2 Sally plus John, 2 Sally plus John minus Bob equals um, 50. And then the last equation is minus Sally plus John plus Bob equals 20. Okay, so this is our new system of equations. Let me just make sure I got it right. Looks good. Okay, and we could write this down as a matrix A times Sally, John, and Bob equals a vector B. I could say matrix A is just, um, you know, matrix A times Sally, John, and Bob equals 60, 50, 20. And I would read this matrix A as just the coefficients of the terms in this uh, system of equations. Okay, so I would get 1, 1, 1, Sally plus John plus Bob, 2 Sally, 1 John, minus 1 Bob, minus a Sally plus a John plus a Bob. Okay, I got my A, X, and B. Good? Uh, A times X equals B. Okay, good. So that's a perfectly fine way to write things. But if I actually want to solve for the inverse of A, there's a more useful way to do this. So what I really want to do is I want to say my A matrix, my 1, 
1, 1, 2, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, times Sally, John, and Bob. This is going to equal the identity matrix times my B vector. So it's 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, it'll become pretty clear why we're doing this in a minute. Just, uh, just hold on for a minute. So the idea is now I have A times X equals identity times B. We have A, X equals identity times B. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do all of the same operations we did before. So we're going to try to get rid of all of the, um, we're just going to try to get an equation with just Sally in the top row, just John in the middle row, and just Bob in the bottom row. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of all of the operations we did. So every time we add a row to another row or subtract two of a row and so on and so forth, we're going to do the same thing to the identity matrix. And what we're going to get in the end, eventually, is we're going to get our vector of Sally, John, and Bob. That's x. And then this identity matrix is going to get all permuted and weird, and you know it's not going to be the identity anymore. What it's going to be is some other matrix that is going to happen to be A inverse, and we're going to have that times our B vector. So by going through the procedure of diagonalizing this left-hand matrix A, by getting, turning it into an identity, we want, we want this to look like an identity. So then it's just Sally, John, and Bob. And we're going to do the exact same operations to this matrix over here. And by doing so, it is actually going to turn into the inverse of A. Okay, so this is how we solve for the inverse of A uh, practically. And we're going to work through it for this example. Okay. Uh, and just to simplify notation, um, oftentimes we get rid of all of these x vectors and b vectors, and we just, um, well, let's, let's keep them for now. I kind of like this. Okay, good. So this is probably going to take more than one board because there's a little bit of math involved in this, but I think it's worth doing on a 3x3 three three system. Okay. okay, so what's the first step to try to make uh, my system on the left look like the identity? Okay. Well, what we did before when it was just Sally and Bob is we subtracted two of the first row from the second row, and that's exactly what we're going to do again. Okay, so we're going to subtract uh, we're going to subtract two of the top row from the second row. No problem. Um, and I'm also going to add, so, so let's, uh, okay, so the first step is the first row remains un unchanged, one, 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 um, Sally, one, zero, zero, 60, okay. And what I'm going to do is subtract two of the first row from the second row. And I'm also going to add one of the first row to the third row. But let's start with the second row first. So take two of the first row, subtract it from the second row, and I get 0, minus 1, minus 3. Now, the labels Sally, John, and Bob don't change. Okay? And these labels 60, 50, and 20 also don't change. Um, that's why sometimes it's better just to not write these down because the only things we're permuting are these A matrices. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll, I will just get rid of these for now. Okay, so we subtracted two of the first row from the second row and we're also going to add the first row to the third row. We're going to get zero, 2, 2, and I'm going to add the first row to the third row here. Uh, I didn't do the second row, so I, was, I need um, minus 2, 1, 0. And now I'm going to add the first row to the third row, and I get 1, 0, 1. Good. Okay, the next step that I'm going to do, now that I have 
all zeros below here, I'm going to try to get rid of um, the John term, this middle term in the first and the third rows. So I'm going to add the middle row to the top row, and I'm also going to add two times the middle row to the bottom row. So the next step is, um, good. So I'm going to add this row to the row above it, 1, 0, minus 2. And then up here, I get minus 1, 1, 0. Right, I'm adding these two rows. The middle row remains unchanged. Middle row remains unchanged. And now I'm going to add two of the middle row to the bottom row to get rid of this two. Okay? So zero, zero, and then two minus six is minus four. I'm going to add two of the middle row to the bottom row, and I'm going to get one minus four is minus three, um, zero plus two is two, and then one. Okay, this is all looking nice and good. And then the final step. Um, is now that I have this on the diagonal, I'm going to try to get rid of each of these terms um, by subtracting this 4 here. Okay, so this gets a little bit complicated. There's divisions and all kinds of nasty stuff. Um, in fact, what I can do is I can just multiply this by negative 1 and make all of these terms opposite. So plus 1, plus 3, plus 2, minus 1. Um, I can also divide this by negative 4, and so I can get this to be, um, just divide by negative 4, so this becomes 1, this becomes 3 quarters, this becomes negative 2 quarters, or negative a half, and this becomes negative a quarter. Okay. And now, um, we're going to finally just rem remove two of the bottom rows from the top row to get rid of this minus two. So we're just going to add two of these to this. Um, and we get one, zero, zero. In this equation, we're going to add two of these to this top row. So well, that's not too nasty. So what's um, six fourths? Minus 1 is just 2 fourths, that's a half. Okay, a half. Again, we're adding 2 of these up here, so 2 halves is a whole, so that's minus 1 plus 1 is 0. And again, we're adding 2 of these up here, so we get minus 1 half. This isn't so bad, these are all relatively nice numbers. Okay, for the second row, we're going to subtract 3 of the bottom from this, mi from this middle row. This is 3 of the bottom, so we get 0, 1, 0. We got rid of this 3. And now we have to subtract 3 of these from up here. Okay? Uh, so what's 2 minus 9 fourths? Well, 2 is 8 fourths, so 8 fourths minus 9 fourths is minus 1 fourth. Okay? And then we have minus 1 minus 3 halves, sorry, minus minus 3 halves is plus 3 halves, so it's minus 1 plus 1 and a half is just a positive 1 half. And then finally we're going to subtract 3 of these negative quarters and we're going to get a positive 3 quarters. And then on the bottom nothing changes, 0, 0, 1, 3 quarters, minus 1 half, minus 1 fourth. And if we did everything correctly, I really hope we did, um, then what we're going to get out at the end is that this identity matrix on the left, so this thing is A inverse, right? That's A inverse. If I take this identity matrix on the left times Sally, John, and Bob, it should equal this matrix on the right times my B vector, which I think was uh, 60, 50, 20. Okay? So this thing, which is just identity times a vector, is just the vector Sally, John, Bob. That equals this A inverse matrix 
times 60, 50, 20. So let's just try this out. Okay, let's try 1 half, 0, minus 1 half, minus 1 quarter, 1 half, 3 quarters, 3 quarters, minus 1 half, minus 1 quarter. And we're going to multiply that by our b vector, 60, 50, and 20. Okay. So what is a half of 60 minus a half of 20? Okay, not too bad, we can do this. So 30 minus 10 is 20. Excellent, Sally is 20, fantastic. I can't believe this is working. Okay, the next equation is not too much worse. So what's a quarter of 60? That's 15, so minus 15 plus 25 plus, okay, minus 15 plus, I'm going to write it down, minus 15, plus 25, and then 3 quarters of 20 is 15, so plus 15. 15's cancel, and I get 25. John is 25 years old. Okay, and then the last equation is similar, so 3 quarters of 60 is 45, minus a half of 50 is minus 25, and minus a quarter of 20 is minus another 5. Okay, so 45 minus 25 is 20, minus another 5 is 15. So what we find is that, in fact, you can use this method of um, essentially writing down a times x equals identity times b, and you go through all of the nasty steps to try to make this a matrix look like the identity, you repeat all of those steps to this matrix that used to be the identity, and what you get out is A inverse. And if you take A inverse times B, you actually do, in fact, get a solution X. So this is Sally, John, and Bob's age. Okay, super useful and actually relatively simple and straightforward. Okay, next we're going to figure out how to do this in MATLAB.